Got a little thought for today. And uh, I'm still simple. Heard a preacher a long time ago say, I'm a slow preacher and, and slow reader. Uh, I figured out I was probably slow when I was young and still am today. I don't like running. I ain't going to win no marathons or nothing like that right there. Uh, and one of the words I remember this preacher saying one time he was doing a revival, he said, uh, he said, you know, he said, you can look at things and you can take Samaria, a place. They sort of, sort of, uh, this, this is free. This, this ain't even a thought for today. But thought about it, and it, just that city right there and, and, and where was it? And he said, here's the way that I read it, some area. Okay, so we got some area in our life. Uh, sometimes it don't matter where people are. If we go to a church house, I guarantee you if I come here very many times, I know exactly where you're going to be a set. And uh, the times I've been here, I know where Sister Jackie's going to sit. You can tell that. And... I tell you what, scoot over either just a little bit one way or the other way of, of your seat. Just if you're on this side, scoot over this way. If you're on this side or if you're in the middle, uh, don't crowd each other. But if you can, do that for me. Move out of your comfort zone this morning, and you can do it spiritually. But the best thing is to, uh, when we come to the house of the Lord, we want to come to learn everything that we can. I think about of a man uh, that was a eunuch. And what happened was, he was reading the word of God, but he didn't understand, and the Lord sent Philip to him. This is free too, Brother Mark. <laughs> this is free. We ain't, we ain't got where we're going to be yet. But here, here's the thing. It, he, uh, he was reading the word, and sometimes we, we read, I, I can read this Bible and without praying, and without the spirit, I can't understand it. None of us can. And you know, when I say I, Use it in your life the same way. Put your name in the place of I. Steve Corbin can't understand the Bible unless I pray and read in the Spirit with it. And here's the thing. When we dig deep in this Word and we, we get that true understanding from it, God will bless us. And, I, and, and you can read the same Scripture even over and over. And sometimes you look at it and, and say, Well, I ain't seen that before, but I'm glad... Uh, God is still showing us today uh, through this word how to be saved most of all. Now, I don't know nobody's heart here, so it's easy for me to preach, Brother Mark. That's the thing about it. You know, I, I don't, I'm not here to, to say, hey, I know your sins and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, condemn you. But I'll tell you what, if you're being condemned by it, let God do it and mind him most of all. All right, got your Bibles want to turn with us. Turn to Acts chapter 27. A few thoughts is we must abide in the ship. And there's, there's a lot as we've been even looking today. God's pointed out a few more little things in this. But as, as we're going to read this, we, we look at some of the, the, the things as, as Paul was going on a, 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 a journey to Rome. And what happened was the reason he was going on this journey was because he was bound up. Because that the, 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 the people had... Had fixed it. He had been in, he was in prison at this time, but they, nobody wanted nothing to do with him at this place. They're going to send him somewhere else. So they're sending him to Rome to be uh, uh, before the judges, as you would call it today, before before the ones that uh, uh, is going to uh, make his judgment. Okay. I'm glad I got one. The judge before me, and I've got one that, and one day we're all going to have a judge before us. We're going to stand in front of God, Amen. and he, we're going to hear him say, "Well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter in the joy of the Lord." Or, depart from me, because I never knew you. Yeah, I'm glad I've got a lawyer on my side, whose name is Jesus. Are you listening to me? And he's more than just a lawyer. He fulfilled the law. 
He also is there making intercession still today. And that's because I've surrendered unto Jesus. I surrendered unto the Holy Ghost. Now listen, some people take that word different uh, and, and are scared of that word. Realizing this, and, and I can go back and I can't, I can't uh, just place it right now where I found it, but it's in there, okay? It's in there. It also says, that's what is talking to us today is the Holy Ghost. Now that's the word. Some, uh, we, don't, we don't talk straight to God. Because why? Because we're scared of him. The children of Israel wanted to talk to God one time. Well, when they did, God started to speak to them. And it, it sounded more like thunders and different things going on. But the children of Israel started getting scared because they were scared of what God did. Well, just give me some king. Well, they had a king and didn't even realize that. All right. Getting on to this right here. A little scattered brain this morning. It'll be all right. Acts chapter 27. If you will stand with us as we read his word. I like reverence in God's word. And, you know, sometimes uh, it, it don't hurt to do that at all, I don't think. Get you out of your comfort zone a little bit. It might, might do it. It might not. And we're talking about a ship. And we're going to start... At verse 15, this is a little odd place to start. We might even read through the rest of the chapter. or, or don't know where we're going to stop yet. But one of the last things that we want to look at is verse 44, the end, the end of it. So remember it too. Uh, one of another key verses is going to be, let's just read. And we're going to get to it. Verse 15, and when the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her drive. And running under a certain island, which was called, and I can't pronounce all these words, uh, uh, Claudia, we had much work to come by the boat, which when they had taken up, they used help, undergirding the ship and fearing least they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempted tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out with our own hands and tackling of the ship. And when neither the sun nor the stars or many days appeared, no, no small tempest lay on us. All hope that we should be saved, then taken away. Verse 21. <coughs> But after long absence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and have not loosened from Crete to have gained this harm and loss. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, <clears throat> for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ships. Well, that's a good verse right there. Remember verse 22. For there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am. There's another good part of it. And whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. And wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. And howbeit we must cast upon the certain island. But when the fourteenth night was come, and we were driven up and down in Andreas, Andrea, I told you I can't pronounce words real good, so forgive me. About midnight the shipmen deemed, and they drew near to some country, and sounded, and they found it twenty far fathoms. And when they had gone a little farther, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing the least should have fallen upon rocks, they cast for anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship, when they had let down the boat, the boat into the sea under color, as though <clears throat> they would have cast anchor out of the uh, four ships, <coughs> Paul said unto the, uh, to the centuries, and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. I want to read that again. 
Paul said unto the centurions and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. And then the soldiers cut off the ropes of the boat and let her fall off. And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that ye have tarried, and continue fasting, having taken nothing. And wherefore I pray you to take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not an for, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he, he had thus spoken, to, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of all them. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And then were they were all good cheer. Then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. And when we in all, excuse me, verse 37, and, and we were in all the ship, 200, three score, and 16 souls. And when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and, came, and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day, they knew not the land, but discovered a certain creek with a shore into which they were minded if it were possible thrust in, to, to thrust into the, the, in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchor, they committed themselves into the seas and loosed the rudder band and hoisted up the main sail to the wind and made towards water, falling into a place where the two seas met. They ran the ship aground, and, for, and the fore part struck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. And the soldiers counseled to kill the, the prisoners, lest of any of them should swim out and escape. But the certain centurion, willing to save Paul, kept, the, kept them from the purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. And the rest of them, I've, I've done misread that. And the rest, some of some of the boards and some of the broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Thank God for the reading word. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you, dear God, for the many blessings this day, dear Lord. We thank you for another day of life. And God, today we pray that your, your blessings will, uh, will just come down upon us, dear God. Bless each soul that's here. God, help us to, to hear your word and be doers of your word. And Lord, as we bring forth the message this morning, dear God, we pray that it be straight from you. And we give you praise and glory for everything that you've done, dear God. And Lord, you know each one's heart. And Lord, just help us to be obedient to your spirit. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Try not to hold you very long since we read quite a bit. H have you looked and, and thought about Paul starting to travel? And, 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 you know, sometimes it wasn't the same as we'd travel today. If we want to get somewhere fast, we don't walk. We get in our car. If we want to get somewhere faster, we'll drive to the airport and get on a plane. I'm out. I flew one time and I'm out. It scared me half to death. And the reason why was I thought I would enjoy things in life. And it was sort of like this boat, Brother Mark. And I know Brother Mark's flew quite a bit, but got to thinking about it. And I get this plane and there's 17 people on there and that was the, 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 two, the two pilots. I'm, I thank God we had two pilots. Uh Get out on the runway, and I thought, well, here's a little yellow line. I want to see this guy just take off for her and just see what happens. So I'm sitting there watching this, and I said, and we flew from Lexington to uh, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. I think it was. Uh, or South Carolina, but I think it's North Carolina. But anyway, you know, here we, here we was flying. I, I'm watching this thing, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm ready to take off. So I'm here all uh, cocked and ready. You've ever been that way? The old plane, he holds his brakes, starts to take off, and we go down the runway, and it was windy. And here's the thing. I thought, this is going to be a piece of cake. Well, sometimes things ain't a piece of cake in life is what I'm getting at. 
But we take off, and I see this yellow line up here. Next thing, we start rolling, and it goes over this way. And I see it out the sideways as we get a little farther. Come over this way, and it's over on this side, looking out the window. I'm thinking something ain't right. We finally get off the ground. It gets bumpy all the way and rough. One of my buddies never had been prayed up in his life as much as he had that day. He prayed from, uh, from Lexington all the way to Charlotte, all the trip. I can't remember, it was about 45 minutes or so. But it, when he got off the plane, he was prayed up. I'll tell you that much. I was too. And you know, the thing was, when he got down, he was on his knees. As soon as we got to, to the ground, he got on his knees and said, Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me to let me off. He said, Can we rent a car and go back? <laughs> he was done. Tony McCurry is who this was. They know exactly you know, as, as we're doing this. People, you know, sometimes uh, the thing was, if, if anything would happen, I know he was going to go to heaven because he prayed all that way and he was earnest about it. He meant what he said. Lord, help me. And that's what it takes in their life sometimes to get right with God. But the thing is, you know, we, we, we look at this right here. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that these people in this uh, ship right here, I think it's 276 of them, the ones in this ship, they was worried for their life. But, you know, her God uh, uh, sent an angel to Paul, and he told him, he said, there's not nobody going to be hurt on this. And I, I don't even remember reading this, but uh, not nobody's even, they wasn't even going to lose one hair. I lost some hair this morning. I cut my hair. I lost a few hair, but I, I don't remember any falling out or anything. They could be now. But here's the thing. God can do all things. Because why? Because everything is possible before God. Now, also realizing this right here, as, as, as we went over there and, and I got to thinking about it, I thought, well, I'm going to try this little uh, uh, plane out as we go back. And, you know, as, as we get back on the plane, get our things done over there, we get, we get everything done, we get back on there, I'm thinking, I'm ready again, I'm going to watch this. Here goes this yellow line, you know, it's on this side and it comes on this side. But when we, and I forgot to tell you about this part, when we land, it was way over on this side right here and was coming in sideways. And I still remember this. Here we come, and all of a sudden you hear tars and start squeaking, and it goes Rawr! like that right there. Here's what happens. The pilots done a good job. They knew what they was doing. I didn't know if I could trust them or not, but thank God uh, I, we was prayed up enough to know that God had control still. I'm glad that sometimes when things get rough in their life, and here's the message that we're getting at. When things get rough in their life, no matter how bad it gets, if we got God with us and, and we abide in the ship, listen, if we abide in the ship, we can be saved. Thank you, Lord. Now, there's several different places it talks about ships, and I think this was probably a cargo ship and, 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 and holds some passengers on it. Looking at it and, and, and seeing this right here, I'll tell you one more little story. I, I was in a boat one time, a small boat. We put a motor on it. Hadn't really tested out. Didn't wear my life jacket. Didn't like it right there. Me and my, me and my nephew's out there. But bought this little motor for the boat, 9.9 .9 for the ones that knows her fishermen's little small boat, uh, boat 14 foot wide, and it's about this wide. There are 14 foot long. It's about this wide. And my nephew's pretty good size, and we found out this little motor would go fast. Now, I, no matter what kind of vehicle I've got, <laughs> I've seen and come toward the glory of God, so listen to me. No matter what vehicle I've got, I want to see how fast it'll go. If it's a four-wheeler, motorcycle, whatever, I'm going to try it out at least once. Anybody else in the same boat as I'm in? All right, some, some's just crazy. <laughs> some is crazy and, and the thing is some of you might leave lied to you because you didn't want to tell me that right there here's the thing uh, we get out on, on uh, Lily Creek and go up there and, and you know I, I ain't going to tell you the whole story and then, uh, uh, Brother Richard I think has heard of it before but here's the thing get going out there I told Byron I said Byron I said get out I said I'm going to see what I'll do with just one person in there I didn't take God with me I forgot to do that right there you know I didn't take him I'm, I'm, I'm going to try it out so this little motor's back here. We get everything done to it, and the, and the tiller part, it's just one more handheld, was loose like this right here. I'm thinking, boy, it done good with two of us in there. I don't know what it's going to do with two. Now, 10 horsepower shouldn't plane nobody out that good, and it'll almost plane out with two big people in there. My nephew's big. Mama called him healthy when she was alive. You know, that's, that's what big people was. He, he was way over about 350 plus, something like that at the time. And, and it, so when I say big, he's big, and and I still like fat people too. So don't don't uh, don't judge me. Uh, 
we, that's, that was my family. <laughs> and that's the thing. I still love my wife to death. You know, I, she asked me sometimes. There's another little thing. I don't think she'd get mad at me. She said, am I fat? I said, no, baby. And we, we just got done watching a movie. It was called Madagascar. And we watched the hippopotamus on there, and I'll tell you this much. Watched the hippopotamus on there? I said, no. I said, you, you chunking, baby. <laughs> and my wife is not big. I, she ain't at all. And y'all see her over there. Uh, thing is, that's one thing we've, we've, we've learned to have fun in our, in our relationship. And we can have fun no matter what. No matter what. But uh, God has, has been good to me. But here we go down, here I go down a lake, and I go out there a long ways. And I found out I was in the same shape as some of these people over when it said, if you can swim, swim to shore. I had to do that. Sure did. I had to swim to shore. And I wondered if I was going to make it back or not, Brother Mark. I had two choices. I had two choices what to do. Come around, that little weight comes around, and I take off fast as it go, playing out, and it was doing good. And what it did, it hit one of the little small wakes right there. Dust dark just coming up. I thought, we ain't got no time to waste for anything. I told Myron, I said, go, go take it, go get my truck and back to dinner. I said, I'm going to bring it up on the trailer. Here's the thing, I've done all this. Might sound funny at the time, but listen on. It could, have, it could have been a lot worse. I might could have not been here today. Hit that little wake, life jacket, and the floorboard. Yeah, everything's sitting around. And here's the thing. As, as, as I hit that, it throws me out. And they got these little things that goes around your arm. It hooks to you to your kill switch on that. Didn't have that on either, okay? So my boat takes off. I see it circle. And, you know, I'm out in the middle of Lily Creek a long ways off. I'm talking pretty good little distance. Uh, I could see I could see the truck and stuff, but I had to swim back to the truck. I had two choices to do, but as it takes off and runs off, I, I've lost it, and it got dark enough I couldn't find it. But I know where shore was. I seen the lights up on my truck. My nephew had been over there. Finally, I, sw- I, I had to shuck everything that I had. The only thing I come out was was my T-shirt and my billfold. Dropped my phone, and I kept my phone if I know that the insurance wouldn't pay it if I lost it, okay? It didn't pay for that right there. And these phones are $1,000 anymore today. You know, that's the thing. I found out the music works pretty good, too, just by, by one little little out of date. Uh, not got nothing wrong with people buying new phones. But listen, here here's the thing. As I swim across through there, I could either went to one side of the shore where, in, uh, where I know that where we fished, there was debris and stuff underneath the water. Didn't know what was over there, and I'd have been sitting over there all along. I thought about the, the, the scripture where it says, I was naked and, and you fed me, and, and, and the thing was, I, Byron finally did clothe me after I got back to shore. Thank God. Here's the thing. As, as, as I think about it, I had to take all my clothes off to keep me from drowning because it's going under. I wear boots, big red wing boots. Lost a brand new pocket knife. Lost my my brand new boots. Lost my phone. Like I say, the only thing I kept. I thought, well, this got all my money in my credit card, debit cards, all that right there. I want to save my billfold. I'd have ditched it if I needed to. Sometimes we have to ditch things in our lives. Okay, understand what I'm saying? We have to ditch stuff in our life. Okay, because why? Because we're we're human. We're we're greedy sometimes. We're we, we want the things of the world. Let me tell you something. I found out I'm content. If God's fed me, he gets me up in the morning, I'm content with it. It don't take a lot no more, Brother Mark. <laughs> you, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It don't take a lot to please me. And to be a Christian, it shouldn't take a lot because the only thing that we should really worry about is having, having our Lord and Savior on our side knowing that we've been born again by his Spirit. And when we got that, everything's good. But here, here we look at this, and, and, and they go through it. It didn't take me, but uh, I don't know, it probably took me 10 minutes to swim across through here. But the uh, thing is, I could sit on the side over here and wait for somebody to come and get me, or I could take a chance getting back. And probably the smartest thing I've done went over there and, and sat over there all night long, probably been better off instead of taking that chance. But I took a chance to swim back all the way. And, you know, as, as I started getting tired, and, you know, I hadn't been practicing up on swimming, you know, the thing is, You'll get tired and you'll get to thinking about things. Well, what if I get a cramp? What if something happens? Uh, 
Now, things might even run your mind it didn't that day, but maybe there's a big fish going to come eat me. That's what happened to Jonah, wasn't it? Said a great fish come to eat me. I didn't get eaten by a great fish. So thank God for that right there. I don't know how big a fish is in Lake Cumber, but I didn't get bit or nothing like that right there. But the thing is, I, I look back and I think, what in the world was I even doing getting out of the boat and doing stupid stuff? Y'all see my wife? We all have done that. <laughs> Men and women, it don't matter. We've all done stupid stuff. Don't turn the lights over. Hopefully she comes and repents here in just a little bit. <laughs> it's a thing for, for lying because she thinks I'm on one of those stupid stuff. And, and she's told me that many times. But we all do. We've, we've all come short of the glory of God, okay? And what I'm telling you is we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to uh, falter in different ways. No matter if we think it's the right way sometimes, Brother Mark, it don't matter. We're, we're all going to falter. So, you know, here's the thing. But we have that advocate with the Father. And we can ask him at any time, say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to stay good. So I, what I'm telling you is don't give up. Stay in the ship. Now, also taking that right there, what is the ship? I, I think it is... It's God's house too. Stay in the ship. Sometimes it takes God's house. No matter if it's falling apart or what happens. Uh, if we can make it to land. Okay, now we'll take this where if we can make it to land. If I can make it to heaven. If I just got a little broken piece to hold on to, that's fine. I'm telling you what, we might be broken in spirit and everything else. But hold on to what we got. Things is, you know, we, we look at this and we think, and I'll, I'll try not to hold you very long, don't know how long we've been going, so we've got one more hour, I think. We'll get you out of here before 5 o'clock tonight, I promise you. <laughs> Some don't want to stay that long. It's 4, okay? <laughs> it's 4 o'clock right now. I'm almost sure not that long-winded preacher. I, I, I make fun of, I, I don't make fun of, but I aggravate a lot of other preachers if, if they go quite long or something like that right there. Sat under one guy, and he went for about two hours and 20, 25 minutes one time, won't mention his name, and it was a good service. It was a good service. The Spirit of the Lord was there is the good thing about it. And I told him, I said, you're the longest-winded preacher I've ever seen in my life. And <laughs> Y'all can tell me that, and it was still hurt my feelings at all if they say that. But listen, listen to me. I hope you enjoy this is what I'm getting at. Uh, Paul told him, he said, you shouldn't have left. He said, you shouldn't have left ground. He said, I told you. I told you that way. Uh, Paul Paul knew how to forecast the weather, I guess what you say. He, you know, there was people that done it right now. Uh, it's supposed to snow maybe this week. I don't know if it's still calling for it or not. I ain't going to believe it until I see it. Are y'all? But it is November. Exactly. I told uh, Larry Smith one time, 92.7, I told him, I said, let me tell you something. I said, I'm a better weather man than you are. I said, y'all can't hit nothing anymore. He said, why are you a better weather man than I? And, and setting him up for it. He said, why? I said, because if it's going to rain, I said, I'm going to say it's 50-50. I said, it either does or it don't. He said, you know what? He said, you're right. You know, they, you know, uh, as snow, and somebody trying to predict that, they can't do it much more anymore. The thing is, we can't predict what God actually does because God's salt is more higher than ours. Now, looking back at this, here Paul was. He said, listen, he said, we shouldn't take off. Oh, yep, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Have, have you, are you that ship today? Are you, are you that kind of captain uh, in the ship? We're, we're going to do it. I don't care what. We're going to do it. High waters, it don't make no difference. Floods coming around. Snow's a, a 10 foot deep. I'm going to go. Lisa don't like snow, and I love it. The first little drop of snow, I'm going to be out, don't matter what time it is at night. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 3, that's fine. I want to go out, and I want to play it. And if it's a big one, I want to go bust the roads up. I'm still that crazy and ignorant it seems to be anymore. Here's the way. <laughs> there's, no, there's more in there like that, too. Huh? All right, that's, that's just the thing. I, one, one year it was uh, snowing in Louisville, come 12 inches up there, I hadn't come just to skiff a stove, and I almost called, we called my sister up, I said, what do you think, I think we're going to go or not, I said, she said, I want to, I said, I did too, but I had to work the next morning here, it was late, it's a wonder if I hadn't done that, but if it's around here, I promise you, if there's a road that's not broken out, I want to go down it, here's the thing, if I, can, if I can plow through the road and I find somebody's life on the edge of it, I want to try to help them out and get them out of the ditch, okay? That's what I'm here for this morning is maybe just try to help you out just a little bit. 
try, try to get you out of the ditch. And here's the thing. Uh, sometimes we don't look at it, and nothing that I, I've done or nothing like it right there, but uh, uh, if we can help a brother or sister out sometimes by saying just a kind word to them, uh, we need to do that. Uh, they don't got to be here at church every Sunday. If, but if you see them struggling with, with, with Christianity, if, if, if you see them struggling and, and don't know what the reason is, every one of us has got problems in their lives, and they're all different, okay? Every, every person in this church house, I, probably, I, I promise you, we all got problems. There's about five. The rest of you are in good shape. We don't know what the other person's actually going on. We might think we do. We might judge somebody else. But we don't really know what's going on in our lives. Paul sort of knew what was going on right here. He knew that he must go to Rome. Going on now, no matter how bad it's broken, how bad it's bent, stay in the ship. Listen to me, stay in the ship. No matter how bad you think your church is, uh, uh, that, that you are when you come to church, okay? That's, that, here's, here's a place that's for healing. This place is for, for, for people that need help. The ones that are, are, are in good shape with the Lord, they don't need it. But I'll tell you what, when I find out that I need help, I can come to an altar of prayer somewhere, and i got people around me that's praying for me and helping me. Does preachers still need that today? Yes, they do. Does 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 piano players still need that? Does song you know the song leaders still need that? Does the the superintendent? Yes, they do. They they need that. Each one of us needs it in their life. But we, I'm, I'm glad that we got prayer warriors in our church. And listen, uh, because you might feel a little bit uncomfortable, don't get un let, let God uh, get in your life. Don't worry about what somebody else thinks about you. I tell you what, if somebody else is judging you, they're a lot worse than you are. Is what I'm telling you. Is. It don't matter. You mind you mind what God has to put up on your life. And no matter if we have to, if I have to be at an altar every, every Sunday to be satisfied with God, do it. Don't, don't, don't hold off. Grab a hold of a little piece of board somewhere if you have to, if you can swim, and you're a good, strong swimmer. Now listen, what I'm saying is, I made it to the shore. Before about uh, 10 feet before the shore, I was thinking, Lord, and I, and I said this out loud, no, no, my nephew's right behind me, and here the ramp was. Swimming up on my back, I done got that hard. So, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I said that about three times after the third time. I heard my nephew say, stand up. Then I got mad at him, and here's the reason why. When I stood up, I was on a black top, right at the ramp, and there's water about this deep. Didn't even realize I done made it. You understand what I'm saying? Scumped my knees up. Well, I got mad. I said, what'd you let me do that for? About, about, uh, about three quarters of the way, or about a, a quarter of the way when I was swimming back and I got started, I hollered out. I said, Byron, help. Pretty loud. I see my old truck turn around as fast as it could and he shines the lights out that way he couldn't see me. Well, he helped. He called 911. That wasn't the kind of help I was actually looking for. I'm thinking I got coolers in the back of the truck. There's old pallets and stuff, things that will float. I'm thinking maybe it will bring me one out there and help me, you know, just to, just in case something does happen. But no, call 911. I, you know, none thought us dead. Was well, what's going to die? Didn't know all this stuff, but they had the state police, fish and wildlife. County sheriffs, rescue squad, fire departments. I don't know who else is coming. I know all of them right there. Well, I'm embarrassed by the time I get back and find this, Brother Mark. <laughs> Listen to the same way. If you come to an altar, don't be embarrassed about it, okay? I'm glad that they come and help, but I told them, I said, and finally they said the help's on the way. I said, call them back. I said, you're on the phone with them. I tell them we don't need nobody. We're going home. I said, we've got to find a boat now. Never could cost us cost me a hundred dollars to to find this boat. Here come uh, Miss Marina C.S. They had to come out there too, okay. And there's one found the boat. I'm glad they come. They even tried to buy the motor off the boat. They said that's the that's the best little running motor I've ever seen in my life. It's been running all this time. Ain't missed a beat. He said it's still running when we found it. 
We went up there and these little rock ledge, but nobody couldn't see it. Had the state police is the only one come down there, and he finally canceled everybody else off. And you know, as as we're thinking about it, and, and things in their lives get happens for a reason. And I'm thinking, why, why, Lord, why, why did you let this happen to me? The Lord spoke to me. He said, because you're stupid sometimes. Has he ever done you that way? I know Brother Richard have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've had many talks. <laughs> love him. I still love him to death. Listen to me. We do stupid stuff because why? Now listen, I didn't hear a woman one say, oh yeah. <laughs> man, man, you got that? You got that, right? <laughs> love, love and, and like I say, I'm, I'm glad you got a good attention this morning. Uh, listen, here's, here's the thing in their lives. No matter how rough it gets, when God's telling you it's going to be okay and you think there ain't no other way, it's going to be okay. You understand what I'm saying? When God speaks to you, it's going to be okay. And the thing is, no matter what we go through this life, if, it's, if it be of cancer, if it be uh, 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 an illness that we think, God, God healed the lepers. He done that right there. Uh, if, if it seems like every day that there's always something wrong, keep praying. Don't give up on it. It seemed like this whole life and in, in, in my life too. Every day there's something, another, another, another something that comes upon me. And you know we it, we can't we can't control it, and we start getting aggravated and mad. I'm, but I'll tell you one thing: every day that I got, I found out that I've got a God that still loves me. I've got a I've got a, 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 a Jesus that, that has died upon the cross of Calvary for me. I've, I've got somebody that's there that's still speaking to me, uh, knowing what my heart is. And and I'll tell you what: He's 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 still there loving on me. I'm I'm glad I got somebody loving on me. I've got a family now. Thing I know they love me, but I, my God loves me a lot more than my family does. I made it. I made it back. Then I start getting aggravated because I made it. That's human nature sometimes. Why all this stuff got to happen to me? There's a reason for it. Over probably 15 or 16 days, I'm not for sure. I know, I know it says 14, and there's a couple of days after that right there. In this time, they was out here in this ship. They was out here in the ship that long, fighting for everything they had in them to keep it afloat. Let me tell you what. If we have to fight 100 years to make it to heaven, everything's going to be worth it, okay? It's going to be worth it. Keep fighting. Keep, keep, keep pressing towards the mark of the high calling. Looking at this, and I, I think back, you know, here Peter was, and, and they, they was out on a, on a I, get in, I think it's be a smaller ship, but they, they rode all night. They, they, here comes Jesus walking on the water. Think about it. <laughs> Come walking on the waters and still rough, rough, rough at this time. And that's when, when, when Jesus told him to come. And, you know, Peter said, well, I'm, and, and I, ain't, I ain't Peter, nothing like that right there, but I'm about, I'm about that half stupid enough to say, uh, come on. You know, if I heard somebody come, I'd just go. I go, that's about the way Peter was. I, you know, hey, wait a minute. I, I'm all right. I can go. But Peter got to looking around, and he started seeing the waves, and, and he took his eyes off of Jesus. Didn't mind what he said, and he started beginning to sink. Now, if Jesus, if, he, if Peter hadn't cried out, Lord, save me, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to him. He didn't drown right there on the spot because he was Jesus. But Jesus lifted him up. More times, more times, and more these, these other places where it talks about ship. Here, 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 Moses was. Children of Israel been tolled and 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 beaten by the by Pharaoh, Pharaoh's armies after them. Think about this, Pharaoh's armies. There's always something after us. It seems to be, don't it? Everything. Sometimes we turn this way. There's something after us. There's something always going on. It don't seem well. We can't keep. We can't get a break. I'm telling you what. There's going to be rest one of these days. And, and and the thing is, may, maybe it's for our life that we, we 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 if we if everything was good, we'd forget about God. God told Moses, He said, "Raise up your staff." And He parted in them. I'm making stuff short this morning. God told Moses, "Raise up your staff." What happens? The water is departed. Children of Israel walked through on dry land. 
do you realize? The same ones right here in this ship. They had to get rid of everything. They pitched their wheat over the sides. Took all the weight that they could off because everything's tossed around so much. Paul done told him, he said, everything's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. I'm tell you, I'll tell you this much. If you're a child of God, everything's going to be okay in this life. Pray for it. Things that bothers you, it's going to be okay. I can tell you that for a reason, because I've got a God that tells me everything's going to be okay. Sometimes we don't realize that we get we get aggravated and say, why, why? Sometimes I might take it out upon my wife. I might take it out upon our spouses. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to work. Do we worry? Yes, we do, because we're worrying people. We do. If I stay, it's going to be okay. And if I go, it's going to be okay. When I pass on from this old world, Mark, I ain't got to worry about what I, what I think, what somebody's going to say. When, when I'm, if I'm laying a casket, if I got burned up, it don't matter. I don't I don't know. I ain't, I ain't been I ain't never been cremated yet, so I don't know how it feels or nothing else. But look at look at it this way. If they throw me this down an old hole somewhere, I ain't got no casket or nothing else. If they, somebody speaks words at my funeral or whatever, I, I don't, it, come if you want to, but I'll tell you what, don't be up there moping around for me, because I've got something a lot better. If your heart ain't right and you come to my funeral, you mope a little bit, and I'll tell you why, until you get God, then life is miserable. When you get God in your life, things changes. I'm looking for the hereafter. I'm looking for that eternal life that keeps going and going. It's better than the Energizer Bunny. They, they can show it keeps going and going. No, nah, it's going to run dead because it's human made. <laughs> but the things that I know that ain't is God made is forever and ever and ever ever and it keeps going have you ever thought as you count how far how, how far can can you count to after a while we don't know how far we can can you we tree and uh the and or whatever i don't know and, and uh, now there's more there's more that's the way god is never ending and we don't even look at that we got things with time limits on it. We got things even, even in church churches. We got things in time limits. Uh, as people starts getting hungry, <laughs> there ain't very many fast many days. <laughs> this is free for you today. There ain't many fast on a Sunday because as soon as they they hit twelve o'clock or something like that or or, or twelve thirty whenever they get ready to go to lunch and you got that set time. Boy, I can't I can't wait for that preacher to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can't wait for him to get set up. I'm hungry. I wonder what day people fast on, but I promise they ain't on Sunday afternoon, is it? <laughs> Love y'all. Don't take that the wrong way. That's, a, that's just to have, have fun with you. I, I want you to laugh and have a good time. Now, listen, if, if I can't see a smile on somebody's face in church, there's something wrong with you. I'm telling you, you ain't found the love of God that I found. I'll tell you that much. I can tell you what, I, I, I still like joking with my Lord. I sure do. I, I like having a good time with him. Because why? Because he knows how stupid I am, amen? He does. Sometimes I say, Lord, what if I was a fish, what would I act like? I'd probably drown. <laughs> sure would. Listen, stay in that boat, no matter if you're the best that you can be and you can swim the shore by yourself, that's all right. But if you gotta if you gotta grab a hold, maybe something just floats just a little bit. Say it's a little piece of wood that big, and it's gonna hold you up. That'll get you through. Stand with us this morning. Brother Mark, fix to turn over to you. Father, today we love you and we thank you, dear God. Thank you for your, your kindness and your mercy.
And God, we ask that you'll soften each one of our hearts, dear God. Help us be obedient to your spirit. Love on us today, dear God, and help us just to do your will. And God, hear the cries that goes out from the hearts of these people today, dear God. Lord, touch the ones that need a special touch from heaven. And God, help us all to be obedient to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Mark. Just as I